Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 189 of Screw the Commute podcast. We've got Pagine here. And you know what? She just goes by her first name because if it's good enough for Oprah, Shakira, and Beyonce, then it's good enough for her. But wait to hear her story. I mean, from gang member to one of the top female motivational speaker, speakers in the world. So I'll introduce her to you in a minute. I hope you didn't miss episode 188. That's Jeffrey Gittimer, the king of sales. And this is our only and first explicit episode. So I think... Uh, we had a couple slip-ups in foul language. Well, he did, anyway. <laughs> so if you know Jeffrey, you say, well, only a couple. Uh, so I'm just warning you on that one. That's episode 188. Now, our podcast app's in the App Store. You can do lots of cool stuff and on your mobile devices with it. Save your favorite episodes, and it'll pause itself if you get a call and then start back up, all kinds of stuff. So check that out at screwthecommute.com slash app. That's A-P-P, screwthecommute.com slash app, and you can download it uh, right there. All right. Also, I uh, want to thank you for listening to make sure you grab a copy of our ebook. This is our big thank you for listening to the podcast, How to Automate Your Business. Just one of the tips in this ebook has saved me over seven and a half million keystrokes and allowed me to handle up to 150,000 subscribers and 40,000 customers without pulling my hair out. Uh, we sell this book for 27 bucks, but it's yours free as my thanks for listening. Plus, when you're on the download page, I got another surprise white paper for you that some people are charging four, five, and 6,000 bucks for this information. You can grab it too. Just scroll down at screwthecommute.com slash automate free screw the commute.com slash automate free and everything we say including all Pagin's great stuff are going to be in the show notes for episode this is 189 so you go to screw the commute.com slash 189 and it'll take you right to her episode all right our sponsor is the internet marketing training center of virginia it's a distance learning school which teaches legitimate techniques to make a great living either working for someone else or starting your own online business or both. You can check that out at imtcva.org, imtcva.org. And also, one other thing, I don't want you to get robbed in your and your family's higher education quest. So be sure to watch the higher education webinar at screwthecommute.com. I'll tell you more about that later. All right, let's get to the main event. Pagin is in... the is in the Motivational Speaker Hall of Fame. She was named Minority Business Entrepreneur Top Business of the Year, and she's been interviewed by the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, CNN, and Univision. She's the founder of the Power Women Global. or uh, I don't know if you call it that. She'll tell us the exact term. It's Power Women Global for Women in Leadership and Business with over 5,000 members. She's also the founder of Power Women Pro for women speakers, experts, and authorities that has over 600 global members. Pagin, are you ready to screw the commute? Screw the commute. <laughs> of course, I did that a long time ago. The thought of being back in my car in New York, driving for hours to get to my position, my, my job was... Oh, Painful. you're starting to cuss already, making this an explicit episode, J-O-B. <laughs> hey, I haven't, I haven't even started yet. Become, <laughs> you know, when you when you tell me that Jeffrey Gittimer has been on and Jeffrey and I know each other well, like, don't do that because you'll get me started. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So tell everybody what you're up to now and then we'll take you back and bring you up through the ranks, see how you got where you are now. For sure. So I work with women in leadership and business who want to be brave, be bold, be seen and be heard while being paid really well in the process. And I do it through speaking, coaching, this Power Women Global online membership programs and trainings. What I do is I teach them to lead, sell, grow and kick their butt so they can live the life of their dreams and do the work of significance. 
So tell tell us more about that the, the Power Woman Global. Go in deeper on what what it's all about. So Power Women Global is designed for two different types of women, women in leadership, and that could be major corporations, uh, the military, in large positions where they're leading hundreds, if not thousands of people, and they want to be more powerful, have presence, be able to really go into a higher level of influence and significance. So I work with them and we teach them how to have influence impact and how to inspire others at that that high level. My Power Women, Power Women Global also addresses those women in business. So women who really want to get paid well for their expertise, for their insights, for their wisdom, and for what they know how to do in a way that fulfills them, gets them paid really well, and ensures that they live a life of dreams. And my work has evolved over the years because I'm one of the few women that have been in the motivational, uh, the million dollar speakers group. I'm definitely the only woman who's ever won from the Department of Defense, um, something called the CPAP for excellence for contracts over a million dollars. And so there's a, there's a mindset that goes with that. There's a way to look at yourself, believe in yourself and have confidence in yourself. That's why I want to teach them to lead, sell, grow and kick their butts. How does it actually work? I mean, is it, it's a membership or, and how, yeah. how, so, how do so they get this, within this the training? Membership and everything is, say that again. I said, uh, then how do they get this training to, to get all these great things? Perfect. So they get it through a couple of things live. Of course, if I'm going speaking, I'm hired from a corporate client, but also online. So they, people can go to powerwomen.global. They can sign up and get more information. What I have is a membership, a, a private membership for women leaders and that we do coaching and online coaching through zoom and through activities and those executives hire me so they could have private practice sessions mm, okay but they're all over the world they can't fly in right they come we do ask them to fly in for one day because i have professional role players and we act out real scenarios that they're going to interact with so that's my executive group so all of that is online except for one day. And we'll be having our first Power Women Global Conference in March 25th, where people are flying in to work with my role players and connect with each other, of course. Online, we have Power Women Pro, which is both, I have a free group for women who are paid speakers, experts, and authorities where they learn and, and get connected. And then there's also my private membership, which gives them coaching with me. They learn all the six areas of operations of running a really successful expert business from sales and marketing to promotion, to presentation skills, to mindset, which is such a huge thing in my world. You know, you've got the mindset of knowing I deserve, I receive, and I accept. That is a huge part of it, as well as understanding and, and building these connections. So they get coaching and they get the online tools they have webinars, and then we have a 12-week mastermind program, which is fabulous. <laughs> and they sign up, and every single Tuesday from 6 to 8, they are with me and the other members, and we kick But I mean, we're in the middle of a, a session right now, and the results are, we're only in week six right now, and the results are phenomenal. So, and we use the book, Think and Grow Rich and Think and Grow Rich, A Woman's Choice in those books. So it's really about incorporating the mindsets, making sure that people are doing what they say they're going to do. You know, not just saying, not just wishing, you know, wishing and hoping and <laughs> praying and saying isn't going to get you anywhere, right? It's got to be, this is what I de declare. This is what I demand. This is what I want. And I need to be surrounded by people that will help me get there. And that's what I do. See, now because you sang that song, now I got to pay royalties to ASCAP and BMI. <laughs> <laughs> hey, No, it was less than seven seconds. Okay. So is, uh, do guys try to infiltrate your groups? Well, they want to be in my group. I, you know, I have, a, they, they definitely want to be in my group. So I actually started, it'll start November 12th, a 12 week mastermind for the boys. There you and, go. And the girls that want to play with me um, because, you know, nobody really talks about, I mean, people talk about the speaking part. People talk about the marketing. They talk about the sales, 
but they also, but oftentimes they don't talk about the operations behind the scenes. And you know, Tom, you and I both know that the back office, the systems that you have behind the scenes are so important so that when you're living, you know, when you give out the commute, what you're doing behind the scenes is so critically important to have consistency, to know, make sure that you have the right people in the right place, helping you do the right stuff. And in order to really feel, and that makes you feel confident, that makes you feel um, powerful and allows you to do what you do really well. And we don't talk enough about that. Now is all that so stuff, I like to talk about it. All that stuff available through the uh, Globe or these separate websites or where do they go for the... They could just the go speaking. to powerwomen.global and in our newsletters, we talk about all those things, of course. We share about it and oh, get, you know when things are opened up for registration, when things are closed, but it's a way to stay connected. And then I have uh, face, different Facebook groups, which when they sign up for powerwomen.global, they'll get invitations to all the different Facebooks that are most relevant to them because I have a whole bunch of different Facebook groups that are relevant to different segments mm -hmm. of my power women because it's a, it, you know, let me just share how this all came about. Can I? Yeah. I just want to be clear of whether the power women pro is completely separate than the power women global. Is it, that it's yes part no? of it. So power women global covers the two sides of my house, leadership development and entrepreneurism business. So both of those sides, the leadership and the business fuel each other, right? So mm -hmm. my women that are in corporate executives, those women that are moving up oftentimes need to have experts and consultants. So they'll come to me, but also it's a way for them, for us all to build community. So it's one big umbrella with two very different segments. All right, but the Power Women Pro, that's for speakers, right? Uh, uh, Correct, female, that's speakers, experts, speakers. and authorities. Is that an, a separate yeah. website? That is a separate process. I So yes and no. So it's a, sep it's a totally separate Facebook group that's called, and you could go to powerwomenpro.com which leads you to the Facebook group. You there have you to go. Apply yeah. to get in. So it's a separate website than Power Is that what women. you were trying to tell yeah, me? Yeah, it's powerwomen.global. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> there you go. Perfect. So somebody is a speaker, but so not an executive. powerwomenpro.com. There we go. For the speaker experts and authorities, go to powerwomen.global to hear about everything. And that's where we'll leave it. Perfect. All right. So let's take you back to, I mean, gang member, what's that all about? I was, I was never really afraid of you until I heard that, you know, I've known you a long <laughs> time and then now I'm afraid of you. <laughs> well, you should, you should have been afraid of me back then, but you know, <laughs> it's okay. I, so when I, you know, I take, take out the violins. And what age are we talking okay. about? So I was in the gang from the time I was 13 to 17 years wow. old. Wow. 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 And, you know, the time where I grew up, well, at, at, so I, I have the background story. I mean, you know, the, the alcoholic father, the abuser father, the mom kicked him out. My sister became the local junkie oh, and geez. prostitute in our neighborhood. And, you know, and people would say, Yo, you're going to be just like her. And that really ticked me off. So I was not a, I was an angry kid. Mm -hmm. I was an angry teen. And I was also really, really, really good at jumping from group to group and playing my, you know, I, I, now my, my motto is be feisty, be fearless, be focused and fun. And honestly, being feisty, fearless, focused and fun was really, really helpful for me at that time in my life because I was able to go within all the gangs and one particular group really um went and recruited me and that's actually where i got my first sales job i tell people because <laughs> i was made the escorter which meant that there are lots of rules in a gang lots of rules and if you mess up in those rules you get beat up and i was the escorter so i would go to you well actually if your name was Tabitha, I would go to you, Tabitha, because maybe you checked out the boss's, you know, boyfriend okay. in the wrong way. 
I see. And therefore, it was time for you to come and get beat up. Oh, wow. And so I was the one, that, I was the escorter. I would convince you to come with me. Just come on, come with me. Just get it over with. I'll be right next to you. You don't worry about it. <laughs> and uh, so that's what I, my role was within the organization. And when I was 17, I was standing in front of our corner and it, I wasn't in a really big famous gang. That was just a, you know, the a group of degenerates that <laughs> we all hung out with each other. And we were standing on the corner and I had a bandana on, I had my gang jacket on. Uh, we of course were chains and I was smoking cigarettes like crazy. And I was with lefty rats and peanuts. And those were the girls. Oh, wow. <laughs> and inside my mind, from the outside, I was really tough. You were scared of me. They, they, my nickname was called La Loca, the crazy one. Wow. Because you never knew what I was going to do. And, but in that time, that moment for me, it was, I just knew, all I could say in my head was, there has got to be something more for me. This cannot be what my life is about. I, I have to, there's got to be something else. To give you some backstory though, I had already been kicked out of my first high school. I was failing in New York. If you graduated from high school, you automatically got to go to college. I was failing out of college. At the same time, when I was 13, my mom was really scared that I was going to get involved like my sister had been. Mm -hmm. You know, my sister had run away 16 times. Wow. And, you know, so she signed me up for the Girl Scouts. And I had a really weird, wonderful Girl Scout leader. I got into a special program for high risk girls and I got in when I was 14 and for a year I was with this woman named Mrs. B who did not do, she did not do cookies. She did not do arts and crafts. She would take me and three other gangbangers downtown to wall street. And she would stop women back then who were, you know, rare working in wall street. And she would stop them in the street and say, tell them how you got there. And we thought, Denise, Barbara and I thought the woman was crazy. Yeah, she was the loco. <laughs> was, oh, my God. You, you have, I mean, if you saw the way she would stop these people. And, of course, the only rule that she had with us is that we had to wear the Girl Scout cadet hat, okay. which looked like a beret, right? Right, right. So imagine girls smoking cigarettes, wearing these <laughs> gang jackets with this girl scout array on and this white woman with bouffant yellow hair with a strong, I mean, the woman was a strong personality stopping you in the street. I mean, it was like, we would look at each other, like trying to look cool. But at the same time saying, this woman is whacked. Must have worked. It did because when I was 17 and on that corner, she just came back to me that I was worth more. I'm, I'm able to achieve more. There's more for me out in the world. And within a week, I had decided I was leaving the gang. I got scared that they would go after me. So I actually left the country. I never realized that I could have gone to New Jersey or to Florida. <laughs> but I thought I had to leave the country. And I ended up going to Spain. And so I got to Spain when I was 18. With $1,000 that I had found, I have since paid back. And, oh, you found it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I found it. And then, um, but when I got there, you know, I didn't speak Spanish really, even though my family was Spanish. And even though the gang was a, a Spanish gang, none of us could speak Spanish. We also, we had this belief system that if you took an O or an A and put it at the end of a word <laughs> and nobody said anything, it must be Spanish. <laughs> so um, in Spain, you know, when you're talking to entrepreneurs, there's something called hustle and there's something that you have to really be uh, determined. And in Spain, I was trying to find a job because I was running out of money quickly and nobody would hire. My mom had been a school teacher. So I thought through osmosis that I understood about nursery schools and early <laughs> childhood education. So I went to over 36 uh, nursery schools in Spain and nobody would hire me because I couldn't speak Spanish. Right, right. And then I got slick and I said, there were a lot of expats living in Madrid, you know, for big corporations right. that were there with their families. And I said, if I can't get a job, I'm going to try to find an investor. So I went to a nursery school that I had been to earlier and she had spoken English. And I told her, I'm looking to open the first bilingual nursery school in Madrid. 
do they, does she know anybody that would want to invest in a nursery school? And she put me in front of, with this guy in this Pedro and I went as partners and he had the money. He was, well, I was at that point, I was only 18. He was in his like just 30, maybe, you know, late twenties and had came from family money and we partnered up. And by the time I left at 23, we owned three nursery schools, which I sold to him at a profit. Wow. wow, wow. So, but it was really about, I never worked so hard in my life because obviously I, Ooh, I bull, I, I, <laughs> I made up a lot of stuff, right. Of what I knew. And I was writing my mom and telling her, send me books. This is before there was internet and stuff. So, right. you know, ship me books, ship me workbooks, send me teacher's manuals. Cause you know, I was like, I, we were getting kids coming and I had to figure out what to do. And I had to train teachers. So it was uh, the art of hustle and the art of, I got to make sure I get this done. And, and that's the same thing that happened even with the speaking business. Um, when I sold the business at 23 and it came back, I worked my way up from receptionist to national sales manager in, in menswear and then director of and operations. What, what company was this? Oh, uh, Pierre Cardin Gant was how I started. Oh, okay. So I was your... Hello, Pierre Cardin Gant. Hello, can I help you? Hello, <laughs> can I help you? So that um, was your technically your first job? That was my first job when I came back from, okay. the, from Spain. After being a big um, entrepreneur. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, in between all those times, you know, in between from when I landed and I got that job, oh God, I was a, a waitress and I sold boats and, <laughs> sold boats. you know, I needed to, and then I, you know, my stepdad was so cool and that he said, you know, you, you don't have to be, you know, it's time for you to, to really get a job job. And so I got this job as receptionist, which I, you know, and I just knew, I knew sales. So I moved up through a series of crazy experiences, which I don't know how much time we have. I ended up just moving up rank and becoming national sales manager and, and then director of operations. And then I was hired. Over by how long, what period of time? Oh, I was in that industry of the menswear industry Menswear and manufacturing, I'll say, for about a good, good 10 years. Um, and okay, just so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to uh, uh, get you to tell us how you turned to be an, an entrepreneur again. But I want to pause for a second and back up to the lady that was taking you on Wall Street. Did you ever mm. follow up with her? Do you ever know what happened to her? Wouldn't she be I don't a even great... know her name. I just know her as Mrs. B. Oh, which... man. Now I've over the years I've told people do not you know told teachers and people please don't let them just know you as Mrs. G or Mrs. B or whatever <laughs> because you reach a point where you've made such an impact in someone's life I don't know how to reach out to her so the only thing I've done is so I donate a lot to Girl Scouts mm -hmm. and I present to Girl Scouts wouldn't it be great if that lady was in Power Global somehow. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, you know, she, she was, she was very unique. She was a cigarette smoking, French smoking with this, the stuff going up her nose. Oh. <laughs> um, and she was just so tough and strong. And the reason she had no children, she wasn't married. Of course, back then I'm looking back, she was probably maybe 35, but I imagine that she was like 100. <laughs> um, and she just, she just, the reason she picked me, Barbara and, and Denise, and why she was very specific to Girl Scouts is that she knew to be successful, you needed to be tough and strong and, and gutsy, right? And so, she wanted those girls. She wanted those girls. And it's really interesting. I, I lost Denise ended up owning 15 of the top nursery schools in Hawaii. She's one of the premier experts on your, uh, on early childhood education wow. is known throughout that the whole, the whole region as the expert. 
She designed it, she created, she developed it. Um, Barbara, I had heard, had become a lawyer on her own, but I don't, I lost touch with her a long time ago. Um, and then me. So the impact that she had on us was significant and powerful. She just made us, somehow made us realize that we can do way more than we imagined. Well, wouldn't it be cool if somebody heard this or we put out a social media call and, uh, and somehow found out? What happened to her? That'd be, that'd be oh, I've tried. I mean, yeah. I've, I've contacted Girl Scouts. We've contacted this, the, you know, Mrs. B. And they're like, you got to give us more than that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm even calling her Mrs. B. And I know she wasn't married. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, let's take, how did you transition to be an entrepreneur again? Did you save up money? Did you just get sick of it and quit one day? What? How did this so, uh, occur? That's really, that's a great question. A really great question because uh, when I was president of a drug selling company, the CEO had raised his money through his family. And one of the questions he had asked me is if, you know, if this doesn't, if you don't work out, what will you do next? And I said, I'm going to go for my master's in social work. And I really thought, he said, why? I said, you know, I'm just, I didn't know what a social worker was at all. <laughs> And no clue. I just was really fascinated in why women help and hinder themselves and how organizations help women and hinder or grow themselves, you know, because I was always the only woman at the top of the, the you know, the business I was always the only one woman sitting in, you know, the, the meetings and the sales meeting and with the CEO and things like that. And I was really curious about that. Why me? You know, I'm not the, the smartest one in the, the world. I just covered by tons of people who were really smart. Um, but I was fascinated about that. That led me to, so when the business closed, not because of me, by the way, he had a fight with his dad, which cut the funding. So I went back to school. I went to school for my master's and at the, during when, you, when I'm going for school for the master's in social work, they told me that I had to go and get an internship, which led me to doing an internship and creating a program for uh, women and girls in a high risk in Bushwick, Brooklyn, which was the highest rating of killing and guns wow. and uh, drugs and all that. And I went in, of course, I don't have a social work background. I don't think like that or anything. My thing was you set goals and we sell stuff to make money. Like right. I didn't understand <laughs> the non-for-profit world. I didn't understand. <laughs> what do you mean you had to get grants? We could raise the money. And so what I did was I went to the Home Depot the local Home Depots, and I bought every dead plant that they had. <laughs> and I bought the most horrible colors that everybody returned. And they gave it to me for nothing because they couldn't get rid of them. And we painted this whole office. It was, and I got these women in. I went to Entenmann's, the district Bakery, right? it was on Long Island, and I bought Duns of Donuts. And I had people raising, you know, we'd sell donuts because there was no donuts there in Bushwick. And we raised money and I taught the women that you sell, you can make money. And the idea came to me was if I can teach women to sell, they will always have a job. Right. They will always have a job. Absolutely. And from that, it led me to a, a group that was fascinated with my thoughts. And so they hired me to work with girls and gangs and I became like Mrs. B to them. Oh, man. So I had welfare reform. I had an early childhood center. I had counseling, but the premise was if I teach you to sell and believe in yourself, you are strong enough and worthy enough and you're tough enough that you can get the job done. That led then to Montel, the mayor talking to Montel Williams about my program, which led to Montel Williams, who used to have a big talk show right, mm -hmm. to have me on his, to have my girls on the show because he had girls that were in trouble. And so he wanted the, the girls that changed their life to be in the show. And when he asked them what made them change their world, they said, oh, she don't know Pegeen. She doesn't let you fail. And so he contacted me and said, can you be on the show? And I was like, all right. I had no idea. <laughs> I, I, I had no idea, you know, but I went on the show and he talks a lot. And at one point I just said, Montel, shut up so I can do my work. <laughs> And I did that on air and that was his first Emmy. That show won his first Emmy. Oh. <laughs> and from there he had me on 32 times. And then he's the one that said to me, 
he had, he was in my face. I mean, like really nose to nose. And he said, you got to get out there. Nobody talks the way you talk. Nobody does what you do. You need to be out there. Why are you playing so small? Get out there. You need to be there. And I, you know, and he was a pain in my neck and, and I knew that he was right. You know, I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew that he was right. And I joined the National Speakers Association. And that what was year was that? Um, 1995. Okay. Yeah. I was in, I started in 91. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, uh, we've known and each other a long time and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like I said, so I was I, never afraid of you until now. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny that, you know, through, through that, I got actually through going to the, the, the chapters, I got my first book and then I was on TV all the time. And I was, um, some, somehow I got connected with American Program Bureau. They were doing all my bookings for me. I was exclusive with them. And the day I showed up at the National Speakers Association conference, my first one, I was, that day was the day I was in the New York Times. I was on Montel's show that day. My book came out and the first people I met was Mark Victor Hansen and John Alston. And now I see some of your books here. Uh... Sometimes you need to kick your own butt. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Is that it's the a, one you're talking about? No, that the first one was called For All Our Daughters, How Mentoring Helps Young Women and Girls Master the Art of Growing Up. Worst subtitle ever, <laughs> worst title ever. And it was because the editor, the, the, the publisher wanted, you know, changed my title and everything. Um but we sold a lot of the books and then kick your own butt. I published on my own and I've sold thousands and thousands mm -hmm. and thousands. That's and a thousands much better title. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, and that's the other thing. So, so I decided to quit my job. Honestly, I t told them three months earlier that I was going to quit my job. I only told my husband a week before. <laughs> Because my husband was an entrepreneur. I was, you know, I was the one that had the, the health care. I was the one that had the consistent oh. paycheck. Oh. And, but he, you know, we're, we're together almost 35 years now. So he's, he's, he was okay with it. But I knew what it was going to happen. I knew he was going to yell. Well, he was he afraid of you too. That's why. <laughs> you know, I knew that he was going to yell. I knew that he was going to scream. But I also knew that I was going to do it anyway. <laughs> and. And that morning, nine o'clock, April 1st, 1996. Ooh, I thought, Tom, I thought I was so cool. Yes, I, I, screw the commute. I was excited. I went down, sashaying down to my office. I had my phone, I had my computer. Ooh, I was good. By 10 o'clock, I was on my hands and knees, crying my eyes out saying, what did I just do? You know, because I learned, I can sell you to the cows come home. I can sell your products and services to the cows come home, you know, but now I was selling me. Yep. Now I was selling my, my property. Now I was selling my mind, my, my personality, my essence. And that took a whole different set of skills and a whole different mindset shift that needed to happen. And I'm totally grateful that I was exclusive with the American program bureau because they were selling me like crazy. And I was, as I was trying to learn to sell me. And, you know, I think that what's important that your listeners understand that, you know, this, any business is a roller coaster. You know, if anybody tells you that every single day it's a straight arrow up, they are lying. <laughs> It is way more like up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And every down, you're learning some skills, some insights, some information, something that's going to propel you to the next piece up. And the hardest part for entrepreneurs, I think, or, or for people that are, that are, that are you know, screwing the commute and ditching the job, the hardest part for them to understand is that part of the fun of being an entrepreneur is the journey, is the up and down. And there are things that you have to do to protect yourself. So you, you can't spend all your money when you're getting money. Because when the money's coming in, it's great. But you can't spend all your money. you got to save it for the downtimes. Um, you know, th that, that 
stuff happens that are so out of your control and you just got to learn to go with the flow and you have to learn to hold on no matter what. I, I have pirate ships because for me, pirate ships are what I am. I am a pirate. I'm an entrepreneurial pirate. I steal people's limitations and I give them gold <laughs> and my ship will sail. And man, sometimes those sails are tattered. Sometimes we get into a major hurricane and I'm, and I'm hanging onto my grog, hanging onto this, you know, the staff as we're just floating and singing a song. You know, I tell all of my staff here, you're getting an eye patch because you need to be grungy. You need to be hustling. You need to know that you, you got to be hungry. I give them all a piece of rope saying, I'm going to toss you out on the ship. You got to toss out. You got to take risks. You got to put yourself out there. You have to just try something new. We're going to keep you. We're going to hold you on to the boat. But I also have a plank. If you're not <laughs> you know, working for a small business is different than working for a big business. And your, your attitude, your, your belief system has to be so strong that, you know, and if you're not there, just walk off the plank, go, just go, because it's not good for you and it's not good for me. And so what I've learned for myself was, you know, 9-11 came, right? Right. And I was booked for three years out. I had three years of business contracts. 913, all of them were canceled. Yep. And from that September to that January, I was scared stiff. You know, I was a primary breadwinner. I was the one that had to generate the money. We had moved to Florida. You know, we I, we had these big dreams. We were we gave up what we had and moved to Florida and you know buy this big house and you know the recognition for me was it's up to me. You know, I have a friend, Jimmy Cabrera. Right, right. And he has this thing where he lifts his fingers and says, if it's to be, it's up to me. He teaches it to kindergartners, right? Mm -hmm. But man, I held on to that. So there were two things that I held on to big, big, big time. One, if it's to be, it's up to me. If it's to be, was like in my mind. And the second thing was there was another speaker. Her name is, his name is Bob Frere. And he was in New York and he had just closed a million dollar deal. And I, I was looking at him like he was a God, you know, on the corner of 57th and 7th. And I'm looking up at him and he's talking about, he just closed his deal. And I went, Oh, Bob, if only one day that was me, you know, with that, <laughs> yeah. you know how you had that look <laughs> and he goes, yeah, I'm a freaking 20 year overnight sensation. <laughs> and Man, I, Tom, I latched onto that knowing that this wasn't a short-term deal. This was a long-term play. And I was just going to hang on to my rope. You mean after 42 years for me, I'm not done yet? No, <laughs> no, because you're still doing this. And you know what happens is, first off, we know, I, I don't know about you, but you know, you're talking about screw the commute. I don't know about you, but when you are driving in the car and you forgot, and you made an appointment between like 8.30 and 9, right? And you just did it on, you know, you're going to meet the person. You just, oh, yeah, let's just meet. And you get in the car and you get stuck in traffic. Aren't you shocked? <laughs> and don't you just go, holy crap, what did I do? There's no way I'm going to do this ever again. You know, see, I never did it in the first place. That was my, oh my, my gosh. Luck. See, well, I, trust me on this. I never I had a job. <laughs> my my job in New York was less than thirty miles away. Oh I could have gone there fast. Every day it took me an hour and a half. Oh, geez. Yeah. And you would have your coffee. You have your bagel. You have the newspaper <laughs> to the side as you were driving. You're you were reading. Yeah, going. you're reading while you're in. Well, because you were inching, if you, you know, right. you put the car in park, <laughs> then the car would move inch for you know five inches, and you put it into drive, <laughs> inch five minutes, put it in park, go back to read, and go. In. <laughs> you know, uh, you talk about screwing no the thanks. commute. No thanks. Hey, we got to take a uh, brief sponsor break, and then when we come back. We're going to ask Pagine, uh, what's a typical day look like for her, and other than 
uh, three years worth of business getting canceled, how she stays motivated. So folks, I'm, I'm down on my knees begging you to check out a particular webinar or pass it on to someone who could use it. It has to do with higher education. I mean, if you're considering getting retrained because you hate what you're doing or you want a better life for yourself and your family, or maybe you have kids, nephews, nieces, or neighbors who are wondering if they should burn up hundreds of thousands of bucks and then end up broke with mountains of debt and no marketable skills, well, you got to watch this webinar. I mean, you got nothing to lose and everything to gain from taking a little time out and visiting ScrewTheCommute.com and click on webinars and watch the one on higher education. And most of it is me recapping what other big highfalutin people in the education field are saying about high, higher education. Of course, I'm biased because I have the only licensed, dedicated internet marketing school in the country that gives you real usable skills in a, in a short period of time. So... Uh, check it out. It'll take you 90 minutes to go through it, but it could save you and your kids hundreds of thousands of dollars. So check that out at screwthecommute.com. Just click on webinars. All right, let's get back to the main event. We got Pagin here, the one named person. I had her, her last name in there, but I scratched it out because I didn't want to offend her. But uh, don't. it's Pagin. <laughs> And uh, so, Pagin, what's a typical day look like for you now? And then how do you stay motivated? So a typical business day usually starts about 8 o'clock in the morning to me, for me. Okay. Between eight and and where are you located now? Now I'm in Florida. You're still in Florida. Florida. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, so usually around 8 o'clock in the morning, I'm having a call with somebody. Usually somebody that either I'm... Um, coaching or somebody that is in my my realm where we support each other. So that happens around eight o'clock in the morning until uh, about nine o'clock. Nine o'clock, I am on social media for a good hour. Uh, I have a lot of different groups. Playing Candy right? Crush and Farm <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny i see i've seen those things i'm like oh god who has time to really do that? i have never touched one of those things i've heard about them but <laughs> yeah it's like i just don't have the time you know not that i i guess i had the time i just don't i i so love what i do that the hardest part about doing what i do is if i start before i take my shower You'll never take That's a shower. A really I, I bad get that. Thing. <laughs> you'll, you'll stink the rest of the day. I've been there. <laughs> I will. I'll be because I nobody needs to see me. I'm just like <laughs> into what I'm doing. So in the mornings, usually between nine and ten, nine nine, usually between nine and ten, I'm going and checking out all my social media. Um, I have a lot of things automated. And it is really important for me to engage with people and to see what's going on, especially my groups. I want to make sure that people are playing by the rules, people are involved, that I'm answering questions that they have for me. And then the other part about that is that I'm also engaging with people on a more personal level. Right. So I'm responding to what they're saying. I'm being involved with them. And that's in social media, that's so critically important. It's not, you know, and for me, social media is Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram. I don't really understand it. So it's like going to a party where I feel uncomfortable. So why would I be there? Right. Um, for me, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, I really understand well. And I think of every all of those things as though I'm going to a major convention. And each one has set kind of breakout sessions and rooms and where I can go and connect to my people. So my Twitter people is like me going to a cocktail party. Hey girl, how you doing? Oh, you look good. What's that going on? That's how I think about it. Just like <laughs> that's I, the way I, I do it. Exactly the same. You know, and that's how I think of Twitter. <laughs> you know, I think of LinkedIn as going into a deep dive breakout and we're being really intense about what we're doing. <laughs> and we're going to discuss and sort of strategize. And, you know, there's more use of my brain in that experience going on. I think of Facebook groups as, you know, we're on a party, but we're on a bus going to an event and we're sitting next to somebody, you know, we're on a bus ride together to go to some experience, or maybe we were doing an experience together 
And so there's more relatable experience and in information sharing. There's more um, human connections in that way. And that's, so that's how I look at it. I, I feel like I go to a conference in the morning and then I go to a conference in the afternoon. That's how I see my social media. Then in between the days, so Mondays at 10 o'clock is always blog day. I write a blog that goes up and sometimes I mess up and don't do it, but I try to cheat myself and find an old article that I wanted to write. <laughs> <laughs> but Monday is blog day. It's also uh, once a month. It's my coaching day for my uh, master mastermind pro members. So I do one a two hour coaching that day. On Tuesdays at ten o'clock is sales tip video Tuesday. It's also be powerful be you video day. So those are two days that I do videos. It's also the night when I do my mastermind group from six to eight. So I have some prep work in there. And then I'm making phone calls and connecting with people through that. Uh, Wednesdays, I am, Wednesdays is, oh, and then Tuesdays is also my live coaching. So I have some live coaching people that come to my office for coaching for two hours. That happens on Tuesdays and Thursdays if we're scheduled. Wednesdays is my free day where I'm not too sure what I'll be doing, but I'm open for interviews. I'm open to connect with people, things like that. Thursdays, like I said, is another coaching, you know, live coaching day. It's also when I have my recap mastermind group that night. Fridays is another kind of free day, whatever it is, or maybe I'm just going to go and hang out by the pool because I can. <laughs> Nobody's there. Um, Saturday mornings at eight o'clock in the morning, I'm on Think and Grow Rich Mastermind radio show. I'm one of the co-hosts of Think and Grow Rich Masterminders. And that's at um, iblogradio.com, masterminders. Sunday mornings, I'm at eight, um, eight o'clock in the morning. I'm an accountability group. And so we spend about two hours talking about our goals, our vision, where we're going, what's, how we're doing our numbers and blah, blah. I've been in that for 10 years. And that's, my, that's pretty much what I do. And then in, in dispersed in between all that, I watch NCIS sometimes. <laughs> I, you know, we create products. We, I, I'm in Kajabi. So I'm learning those tools, you know, learning how to do more. I really love online world. I think that you were really smart, Tom, years ago. Yeah, to, I was right there. You were, you were like one of the first. Right in the beginning, yeah. You were, you were one of the first, way before anybody else was talking about it. You were talking about, about it about this online stuff. I remember so I remember going to a meeting in New York and you were sharing with everybody about online marketing. And I remember people having days looks, days looks like <laughs> I what too. is he talking about? <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, um God, I've known you for a long time. I know it's just simple. You, that's how you screw the commute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you know, so why do I do? It? People listen to like, oh, that's a lot. No, I love what I do. I am having so much fun what I'm doing. So that's your motivation, then you love it, right? I really do. I love it. I've had the blessing of making a lot of money. You know, I made a million. I made a goal for myself one year to make it 1.2 million dollars. In it with ease and grace, and I made it that I made it in three weeks. I made one point eight million. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> and you know, and then I had to, you know, so entrepreneurism. I think that's really important. Is just because now I'm saying that number, and you all go, "Ooh, wow, that's so amazing!" Yeah, it was very cool. So cool, in fact, that then you try to replicate it, and that's when you get messed up. <laughs> when you start making it about the money and not about the service when you start making it about, I mean, money is really, really great. Don't get me wrong. Love it. And it is recognizing that I still have to be really excited about what I'm doing and not, and not getting caught up in, am I running a business to pay people or am I running a business to take care of myself and my family in a way that, that we all deserve and have fun in the process. Well said. Um, That's uh, very well said. Those are great, um, 
uh, yeah, I mean, you're you're really an inspiration to uh, not only to women but to guys you know, with that kind of attitude because so many people, a lot of the younger generation is just wants the maximum money for the least amount of service and and uh, I don't think they know any better and they're they're happy about it. So uh, we don't we don't want people to come up that way. No, and you know, hey, listen, we don't even have to train them because they'll get screwed anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's one of the gifts of being an entrepreneur for so long and being in the roller coaster for a long time. One is you better know that it's a roller coaster. And that saying of what comes up can come down. You know, the bigger the money, the bigger the crash. And the good part about it is if you've done it once, you could do it again, but you have to learn you, you really learn the value of your own mindset and your own integrity, right? Because we all know people that have gotten really sick because they were doing their stuff. And I, I, I've gotten to be a real big believer of karma. Right, right. You know, and, and so you want, you want to believe in yourself. You know, I have... So, you know, I am confident, enthusiastic, optimistic, and powerfully unique. I don't need to compete against anybody. I just need to compete against myself to be my highest and best self. I, you, I think that as an entrepreneur, you have to know that part of your mission is to be my magnetic and to know why you're magnetic. Because the world of sales has changed because we're online because you're being hit on by every Tom, no offense, Tom, <laughs> you know, Dick and Harry, you're, you're, you know, who's being, who's, who's the real deal and who isn't, who has done it and who hasn't, you know, and I will tell you for those listeners, um, Tom has been around, no offense, Tom, a long time, yep. but while everybody else is pitching ideas and pitching stuff, Tom really knows what he's talking about because he's been, he's lived it all the ups and the downs and and understanding that there's a entrepreneurism is a humbling powerfully seductive joyous hardish sometimes oops again, <laughs> um, experience right and and you just have to believe that you're going to be okay i so i live where I look at on a lake. And the reason that I wanted to be, you know, it's been a dream of mine to be on the water with a lake because as an entrepreneur, you have to believe in the unseen. You have to believe that there is a place for you. There is a business for you. There are clients for you that you may not see right now but that you know you're there and you know that you're going to keep on showing up for them. And for me, the reason I love looking at the lake is I know I don't have, I don't, I can't see the fish. I can't see the turtles. I can see the ducks, but I, and I can't see the grass at the bottom. I can't see the nutrients that those fish and those turtles have, but I know they're there. I know they're there. I, I, I tr believe that they're there. And therefore, if I believe that, then I must believe that my perfect clients are there, that the people who adore me, that want to pay for me, that want to do business with me are there, that the people that, that the women in leadership and business that, and, and their allies and the men, they want me so much. They want to hear what I have to say. They want to learn from me. They want to be part of me i believe that with all of my heart my soul i know it for sure and that's where you have to be as an entrepreneur it is imperative that you know that your right and perfect people are there in front of you because if you don't know that then what happens when the when the the stuff starts hitting the fan and it will when the challenges come and they will you have to know that you are you were placed on this mission to do what you do. I people call me the Yoda of women, right? <laughs> and I truly You're much better looking than that. 
Thank goodness. <laughs> but, you know, I truly believe that my uh, Jedi's will come searching for me. They, they so desperately want to succeed and to thrive and be paid well and be heard that they seek me out. I know that. And I think that as entrepreneurs, we have to know that. Because uh, why else are you doing it? Well, that's extremely powerful. The, the thing about the lake kind of reminded me of uh, Dottie Walters Speak and Grow Rich. Uh, one of her sayings was, your answer is always at hand. It's right there. Uh, you just have to open your eyes to it. Pagin, thanks so much for uh, catching up with me. Oh, this has been great. I'm so happy that we got to talk with each other. I, uh, you know, I'm so, I'm so happy that you're still in the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's, not any, uh, there's no end to the game. It's like people say, uh, well, when are you going to retire? And I'm like, from what? What are you talking about? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, so that's where I'm so happy is that I broke my foot and I'm still, and I still hear cha-ching coming in, yep. <laughs> you know, and I get to talk to you. I didn't have to get on a plane. I didn't have to get on a train. How cool is that? It's totally cool. I haven't been on a plane in two years at least. And, uh, and, um, and I was in a hunting accident. A lot of people know that I, it would have been a great story had I gotten shot, but <laughs> <laughs> I just fell on a log and tore my intestines up and uh, money kept coming in. You know, that's the way it works. So uh, so anyway, thanks so much for catching up. We're going to send everybody the show notes for powerwoman.global, right? That's correct. It's, wait a minute. It's a power women, right? Power women. Power women dot global. Global. And for those of you that are expert speakers and authorities, you can go to power women. Uh, I'm sorry. Power women pro. Power women pro dot com to join the Facebook group. And for my men that are out there in the world that would love to be in my mastermind, you know, I kick butt and I have fun. We're starting November 12th. And you could just email me at Pegine, P-E-G-I-N-E at P-E-G-I-N-E dot com and say, I want to be in with you, girl. <laughs> there we go. All right. We're going to have all that in the show notes, folks. And uh, very inspirational, like I said, from gang member and and a really powerful woman in her life uh, changed the course of her life. I mean, it's just a really amazing story that just like that one show on TV, the story continues. So uh, a lot of good to come out of Pagin in the future. So thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. All right, everybody. We'll catch you all on the next episode. See you later.